Guys, I just found out that sim racing isn't real racing. Ah! Oh! <laughs> well, I've got this sim rig and this weird... Oh, no, I thought it was real. Well, in this video, we're going to talk about this, this topic. And we're going to do it whilst driving a glorious one of my favourite race cars in the Seto Corsa. Welcome back to the Gaming Muscle YouTube channel. This video is sponsored by my Fanatec affiliate link. It's not this is not actually sponsored, but there's a Fanatec affiliate link underneath the video. If you buy Fanatec stuff, feel free to use that link. I really appreciate it. It gets me lots of tea bags. Right, let's get driving here. We we we, we can talk and drive. That's the spirit. That's what we do here. Um, there we go. We we will set link down force. Fuck yeah, whatever. Fuck yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the setup. Right, we're going. AI's on ninety eight percent. Silverstone Radical SR3. I absolutely love this car. This car. This is Sean Clark's <laughs> Radical SR3. He's just doing an update version soon, but uh, this is the old version. Uh, I, I love it. It's, it's easy to drive. It's, it's perfect. We'll do another video on it, uh, talking about the car specifically, but amazing. But we're here to actually talk about sim racing not being real racing. And uh, it's, it's really weird because recently, obviously, we like the whole Daniel App thing with him. <laughs> Getting his sim racer friend in to uh, ghost ride the sim rig uh, for him in that competition, which unfortunately has led to Daniel being dropped. Jesus, D Daniel being dropped by uh, by Audi, uh, which which is a bit unfortunate. I think that's a little bit over the top and bit bit unfair. Uh, but obviously, this whole this whole debacle has uh, you know in his video he's like oh the Formula E car's trash it's nothing like the real car and it, it probably isn't to be honest y you know I'm sorry but it probably isn't he's, I, I, why would he make that up um, but it also it raises the thing of like oh s sim racing is not real racing therefore therefore what because <laughs> it's like I think I do think there's a lot of sim racers that are actually deluded into thinking that sim racing is real racing in a sense like that no one obviously thinks they're actually driving a real race car they're all aware that it's a simulator but let's let's for example a lot of people will justify spending the amount of money they do on i racing because they feel like it is close to real world racing and that it uh, you know they're, they're getting a they're, they're getting a, a, a real world racing experience that justifies the laser scan tracks the cars the cars are laser scanned as well and the cars are so detailed and the physics are so realistic therefore it's worth how much it costs to pay as a justification i think that applies to a lot of i racers in terms of why they purchase stuff and i think also with a lot of sim racers in general a lot of them probably apply the thinking of oh um you know um it's cheaper than real motorsport, so I'll spend a uh, £1,000 on a sim rig. I'll spend £1,000 on a steering wheel. You know, it's cheaper than motorsport, so I'll use it as a justification. And the reality is, sim racing in totality, um, and especially specific sims and specific simulator cars, is nothing like real-world driving or real-world racing. It's not real racing at all, whatsoever. You, you can't use it. It's not. A, it's not an actual replacement for real-world racing. It, you, you can't. You, you're not getting closer, really, to real-world racing by having. Um, well, you are in a sense. You are getting a little bit close by having more realistic simulators. But you're not getting like. You, it's not actual real racing at all. It's very much a game. The, the point I'm trying to make is that. You know, you don't justify playing Call of Duty or spending money on stupid skins and stuff for Call of Duty by going, oh, it's a, it's a war simulator. Um, you know, you, it's like you're just denying the fact that it is a video game. And, and ultimately, driving simulators, as we're playing them at home, are video games. We're playing them as effectively Call of Duty with really nice equipment that makes that Call of Duty gaming experience a lot more immersive and a, and a lot more compelling as a gameplay experience. Um, for me, and I think for anyone that's being honest about what sim racing is, sim racing fundamentally is one of the most compelling, um, immersive gameplay experiences you can have. For, forget cars, f forget, forget the actual simulation component. What other game do you have like this amount of depth of force feedback when you're playing a set of course and not all simulators do 
proper force feedback. But, you know, you get amazing force feedback from what's going on in the physics in the game. You can feel, like, the wheels from the wheel. You've got you've got these... Um, the, the details of, like, the, the, the laser scan tracks and everything of real-world locations. Um, I mean, what Call of Duty map or... Uh, Armour's maybe a little bit close, but what real sort of FPS maps are like full-on laser-scanned environments of war zones, you know? You're not, when you're using a, a gun in a shooting game, VR's getting a little bit there, but with a mouse and keyboard, it's like, well, you're not really holding a gun and aiming a gun, are you? It's nothing like that as an immersive experience. Uh, I, I love first-person shooters. I've got like 3,000 hours in Cat Strike Go, don't get me wrong. But as an immersive experience, it's really piss poor compared to uh, driving simulators. So, anyone that's been honest, realistically, sees driving simulators as just basically, especially in the context that we play them at home, they're just very, very immersive games. Now, that said, but despite them not being like actual real racing, there are, from driving simulators, assuming they're set up correctly, i.e. The, the simulator's a decent simulator with a decent, decent simulated car, uh, assuming that your force feedback wheel is set up correctly, and ideally you have a, a, a DD wheel, and assuming you've got pedals set up correctly, and a monitor set up and your computer's running fast enough, assuming you've got all that stuff done well, um, fundamentally, there are transferable skills from driving simulators to, to real-world racing. And there is actual simulation utility, uh, with, with, to be honest, with most of the simulators. I mean, even going to, to stuff that's more um, sort of sim KD, like GT Sport, there's actual utility there from a training perspective that applies to, to real life driving. So, uh, using GT Sport as an example, um, just being a, a huge, huge thing in real motorsport that's separate to the physics and the innate realism, just being uh, calm, relaxed, uh, and staying focused for long periods of time and not getting tilted is, is a humongous aspect of real-world racing, which pretty much all driving games, when, when applied in a competitive environment, capture and, and sort of uh, allow you to train innate, innately. Um, obviously, if you've got laser scan tracks... Oh dear, that was terrible. If you've got laser scan tracks, Obviously, you then know the track layout before going there in real life. Now, obviously, you're not you're not gonna, but just by driving the scan track, the the brake points aren't necessarily gonna match up exactly, and the the German approach might not match up exactly because in real life, uh, you know, there's so much more variability in terms of uh, the, 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 your individual car that might have some like random technical issue. The tires might have a, a, whatever going on with them. The setup might not be ideal. The racetrack surface temperatures might not be ideal on one corner or another corner, or just changed, or there's a bit of oil somewhere. That, real life driving and race dra race driving is just way, 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 way more deep than sim racing. Um, so there's a lot more variables in real life racing. But fundamentally, if you've learned, I've, I, I've never been to Silverstone in real life on the real track. I've, well, being a spectator, but on the circuit I've not but I know Silverstone from driving simulators in laser scan tracks if I was to go and do uh, the drive a driver training course or go to this track for the first time I would easily shave off probably like 10 laps worth of practice um, that would have been required otherwise and like even even in a even in like a Titus or you know like a really low down car, even like a road car 10 laps, you, 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 how much is that? That's like 30, 40 quid a lap. If you, in terms of totality of a day, it's like, it's like three, 400 pounds to do like a track day. So why, you know, if you can do a, a if you've got a sim and you can just, you eradicated that wasted time on the track because you actually know the layout and the general approach of it from a simulator, you know, there's a big utility there, big simulation utility. Um, obviously, you know, there, there is the aspect of, simulators can capture certain properties of real world race cars to give you a general idea of the approach of those race cars it might not be absolute but it could be enough that if you were trying to do a hot lap attempt in real life of the Nordschleifer for example uh, that you have a really good simulated version of the car in R Factor 2 or AC or whatever simulator on a laser scan version of the track and you can just keep practicing the, getting the general flow of it where you're generally braking getting into the mindset so that when they come to doing it in real life with a very limited amount of uh, time and attempts to do it in real life 
they have a much better chance of actually implementing what they what they've learned to simulate or just doing it in real life uh, in a in a shorter period of time and getting a better result from it. So you know, there, there's loads of actual cr genuine crossover from simulators that are applied to to real life driving an actual pure simulation benefit uh, that even goes down to stuff as i say like like gt sport um so no th that is obviously the case but <laughs> but sim racing is not real racing so the, the key thing is the thing to recognize really uh, the crucial thing and this applies to everything in life <laughs> is to not be deluded and delude yourself that something isn't what it actually is. It turns out, I know this is gonna blow people's minds, it turns out that sim racing is sim racing. It has its own rules, its innate properties, its own aspects to it, that especially when you actually start going to the esports side of things, um, it's uh it, it, that those those things will those properties will stand out and the differences between sim racing and real racing will be even more prominent um but yeah you, you always have to just treat what you're doing and be honest that what you're doing is what you're doing don't lie to yourself that it that it's something that it isn't <laughs> because if you do you'll just you'll just be very confused now i I'm not I'm not having a go at people that are sort of a bit confused on this issue because I think a lot of sim companies are actually guilty of promoting this idea that sim racing isn't its own thing and that in a sense it's a form of real world motorsport just digital because it does it does make it look like it's better value for a consumer and of course a bit a big sort of product selling lie if you will is that it's you know it's People can't afford to drive real race cars. They never will be able to because they're too bloody expensive, even crappy ones. Yes, I had an argument with someone on, di uh, on Beasting Racing about this. Yes, you can do club racing for like 10, 15K or something, or even like 9K a year, you can do some go kart. That's out of reach of most people. That's still a lot of money. But um, yeah, the, 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 the point is, is that um, so companies use use that idea that oh yeah you're racing against michael schumacher you've got the driver's name there maybe not schumacher now but you know uh, max verstappen or whatever in a simulator and, and it's like oh well you know uh, i'm sort of role playing out what it's like to be a race driver and i'm getting close to it and it's like well no you're not that, that's just that's just role playing it's like mill simming and mill sim guys are the worst people on earth so you don't want to be like them um really uh what sim racers should aspire to is to be like Mono Hewis or Gregor Hutu or, you know, if, if you want to be, you know, you actually want to be good at sim racing, it's like if you actually want to be good at RC car driving, you don't pretend that you're Michael, I, I was going to say Mark Schumacher, I ate instead of Mark Schumacher, who, who whatever, get Roland Ratzenberger, let's give him some notability, everyone remembers Senna, we don't remember Ratzenberger, and all of these drivers, any of those <laughs> historical Formula drivers, you know, it's like, you 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 want to be like the uh, the, the should, you should want to be like the top sim drivers, not not the real drivers, because you're sim racing, you're not real driving. But so so it, it really really it's just it's just a case of being honest. I think um, I, I I think with a lot of the esports events as well, the commentary on those esports events is covered as if it's a real race rather than a sim race again a lot of it's to do with money and marketing you know at the moment with the whole covid thing it's kind of convenient to pretend that sim racing is real racing for the sake of them getting the eyes on on, a, on marketing and everything and the general audience being like oh it's kind of like real driving the real drivers are in it uh, oh it's, it's it's kind of real oh, oh look at the adverts <laughs> look at the sponsors did racing still going on <laughs> but um yeah so i i think I just, I, I wish in general, I wish, wish upon a star that, you know, everyone just has to be honest. The race commentators for esports events have to be honest that it's sim racing and not real world driving it. And it has, sim racing has its own innate properties that are actually really, really awesome that aren't in real driving. Uh, the fact that anyone can take part in it and it's not basically about who's the best driver out of all the rich people. It's, it's actually who's the best driver out of 
semi-rich people because sim racing equipment, is, even like a G25, is still relatively expensive. But you, you know, it's way, way, way more accessible. Uh, the, the competitive fields in sim racing, the competition levels are way, way harder from a raw numbers perspective than real racing could ever wish to be. It's, it's like how, um, you know, online poker completely transformed uh, real world poker because rather than having to go to a casino where people learn how to play in casinos in a slow context, with online poker, it's like everybody in the 2000s could jump in and play it. And as a result, you had these, you had these guys that have spent way, done way more hands, had way more practice that actually ended up uh, going into into real life casinos and um, uh, tournaments and stuff and actually in a lot of cases absolutely destroying people that hadn't had that degree of training of the actual craft of, of poker um, but then again also you know there's even with poker the on online poker actually you kind of have to approach it different to real world poker and it's still slightly different uh, well uh, physical poker um, the the race craft in sim racing as well I, I, I honestly would not be surprised if there's proportionally more sim races with better racecraft. In fact, it, it'd almost be a given. There'll be more sim races with better racecraft than, than uh, real world drivers, purely from them having to have done, like, they'll have just done way, 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 way more races. Um, obviously, those races will be in the context of sim racing, and people drive differently in the context of sim racing than they do in real life. But not you know not comparably to say something like go-karting or what have you so anyway the, old, the, old, the, the whole point of this video <laughs> as I've said a couple of times now is that sim racing is not real racing there, there's crossover there's shared skills and there's huge utility to sim racing for for actual simulator and training but it isn't real racing and uh, don't don't kid yourself to use that into buying buying stuff or justifying buying stuff. Always be honest to yourself about what you're doing, and enjoy enjoy it for what it is. Because sim racing is absolutely amazing. I I, I I've been addicted to sim racing for for years. I, I just can't drive though, <laughs> and I still can't drive. I've you know I've been sim racing for like ten plus years online racing and racing with our subscribers absolutely fantastic there's nothing beats just uh, f for me personally when it comes to like general gaming um side by side close racing in a in a high stress situation where you're trying to be really precise with the controls uh, you're trying to concentrate you're trying not to make any mistakes um s sim racing th that combined with all the equipment and everything and the immersion especially if you're playing in vr there's no other gaming experience like that. And, and also, because it's accessible, it's something you could just do every night if you want to, which you just can't do with uh, with many real-world activities, even even like tennis. So, yes, well, let me know what you guys think in the in the comments. This Maybe this video will cause a raucous, or maybe we'll, maybe people will be like, oh, hang on, that's just a, he's just said some really obvious stuff <laughs> that I wish, I wish all sim racers and uh, people outside of sim racing actually thought of it like that because uh, apparently a lot don't um, you know if you enjoyed this smash that subscribe button if you didn't enjoy it go away no one likes you <laughs> and um, like button click the bell and all that business but uh, sorry for the atrocious driving there I was in the rant zone when, when I get when the rant RPMs increase the, uh, the lap times decrease it's just how it is um, but uh, I will see you in the next live stream that we do and the next video. Until then, goodbye, everybody, and uh, happy tea drinking.